Good afternoon, I'm Ethan Moy here with Coach B as part of the second episode of Coach B Weekly. Now last week here at the beginning we talked a little bit about Halloween and I asked you what Sasso's uh, Halloween costume was. I actually, I'm pretty sure I saw a pic of it, I couldn't cue that up. Uh, you know, it looked like he was a uh, little pumpkin. Here, so you know, pumpkin one out there. Was that your decision? Was that Roslyn's decision? Was I, it a... I think it's safe to say it was not my decision. <laughs> I was. Uh, I was I a little surprised. I remember you said you won like a little slugger. Yeah, I thought we'd be like a, a ball player. We had we had a lot so many outfits. You know, like a little jersey, <laughs> a basketball player. Yeah. Um, you know, a little boxer or something. Right. You know, we had little mittens. Should have been like a hollow week outfit. Yeah, we could have done like multiple outfits, yeah. but that I guess that was the one that was. Uh, that was distributed to the media for all the people that were <laughs> anxiously waiting for Sasso's outfit. But uh, it came out really cute. Yeah. And uh, I remember when Roslyn sent me the picture, I, uh, I just, uh, my heart melted. I said, oh, that little guy. He's a little stud muffin. Yeah, you know, I felt bad for him for a minute. I said, look at him, she got that hat on him and everything. <laughs> but um, no, he, he handled it well, and um, everyone really enjoyed the photo, so. I'm gonna say, how are you adjusting the parent life now here with the season, you know, started? Well, I get up early every day anyways. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I'm up, you know, I'm usually 5 a.m. every day at least. Um, and now it's like, you know, even though you're getting up at 5 a.m., you might be waking up in the middle of the night some. Yeah. Um, just depending on how fussy right. you know, the baby is. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, that's something that obviously you're not used to. You know, you're not used to waking up and, you know, on, on someone else's beck and call right. to say, hey, I got to get up even though I'm in a dead sleep right now mm -hmm. and go make sure I take care of this. But, um, but you know, it's it's been a blessing. Yeah, um, yeah, that's that's all I could say about it. You know, um, obviously getting a lot more work done in the hours that um, yeah. you know I can early in the morning, yeah. and and then obviously trying to spend as much time as I can oh, with them. But uh, you know, always making sure that we uh, take care of what we need to take care of. So always got to stay efficient, and uh, this is what I you know that hands wide open with a full heart yeah. mentality. I got to have that as a father yeah, now to to have hands wide open with a full heart with him, with uh, with the team and uh, just continue with that mindset. I'm gonna say those time management skills have to come in handy. Oh, yeah, yeah, they do, and I'm, I'm always teaching our student athletes right. how to manage time, you know, and, and you know, a lot of times, you know, as people we get driven in, you know, the game and the win, the loss, and, mm -hmm. and just, and focusing on that, but there's so many other things that are going on here, and time management yeah. is something that I'm really trying to help them with. Right. You know, just having healthy routines, because, right. you know, that's what defines us as people, is our routines. Yeah. You know when you you know when you wake up and how you start your day. Mm -hmm. You know you get up, you make your bed, uh, you, you go to work, and you have a positive attitude. Mm -hmm. If that's your routine every day, you got a good chance of being successful. Right. Things are gonna throw throw themselves at you. Yeah. You know you're gonna have you know traffic on the way to work. Uh, you're gonna have you're gonna bump your head maybe. You're gonna stub your toe. <laughs> Is that gonna set you back so far? You know with having a, you know a baby now. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of those moments where things can just completely derail what your plan was at that moment. But um, you just got to have your, your hands wide open with a full heart and just continue to understand that we're very blessed to have what we have and, and we, can, we can do this, we can embrace this, and, and that's what I'm teaching these guys. You know, yeah. Keep your routines healthy and, and embrace challenges when they try to derail your routines. I think I say, uh, we'll delve in a little bit more into the time management portion here later in the show. Okay. Uh, but I want to get to, uh, you know, on the court, um, First game last night, a 69-59 overtime loss at Youngstown State. The team fought, uh, it was a back and forth game, mm -hmm. never was really out of it. Uh, actually took the lead there late with a Hanukkah EK Matsu three before Youngstown State came back on the other end to mm -hmm. hit a jumper to tie the game and send it to OT. What was the message like in the locker room? I know you were disappointed after the game uh, when I was talking to you for the recap, mm -hmm. but what was the message after uh, in in the locker room to the girls? Well, you know, I would say I was, I was um you know, it stung. You yeah. know, it's the best word I could say. I, I wouldn't say my complete, my complete uh, attitude towards it was disappointing in our effort, right. disappointing in our team, awesome. because we had, you know, we had a lot of great moments there down the stretch, especially where, you know, we could have gave up. We could have said, you know, uh, a couple shots had gone in. They make that run. There's only a few minutes left in the yeah. game. We're down, and then you know, just continuing to to uh, look for that next look and. And to put the ball in the basket and and to give ourselves the best chance and hit some shots there. Hanukkah had a nice shot to put us up too late. Before that, a great steal right. by Bella. Well, yeah. 
and uh, I think Neck had a nice post move and she'd been struggling. She went with her right. Yeah, right hand yeah. over the middle, and that's something we've been working on with her. So she had a nice post move and she had been struggling. So mm -hmm. it would have been easy for her just to keep, you know, struggling, yeah. but she just get down on herself, she Yeah, had a big post move that really sparked us and Bella Steele and obviously Hanukkah getting hot there, hitting that three. Um, you know, you, you just come one one stop away. Mm -hmm. You know, a, kind of a crazy play. I gotta say, the thing is, you sealed the post pretty well in that play, and then they somehow kicked it out and. From my vantage point, I'm sitting there, you know, obviously right beside you guys on at uh, the scores table. Mm -hmm. And I look over, and it seemed like an awkward shot. It looked like her feet were like kind of a little spread out more mm -hmm. than usual. But mm -hmm. you know, yeah, you sealed the post, and sometimes yeah. it happens. Yeah, we, we kind of had an idea what they were going to look to do, mm -hmm. and I thought we were pretty ready for it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they got the ball to her, and and that's their that's their guy. So they were able to get the ball where they wanted. Uh, but we were not out of position at all no. when the ball was caught, and then the ball was fumbled. I think we, yeah. I think we it jammed. Almost, I was gonna say it almost fumbled, kind of like what uh, Callie had mm -hmm. with the game winner here against yeah. uh, SFU last yeah. year, where it fumbled, but then regathered herself and yeah. then swung it around to Megan Smith. Yeah, when when the ball went down, I thought that you know that's ours. We're gonna mm -hmm. we're gonna tie that up. That was like my first thought because we had really been talking about getting those loose balls mm -hmm. and, and getting it. And I, I, I had not even, I have not watched the clip yet. I, yeah. I have not, I've really been focusing in on a lot of other things up until yeah. that last possession. And I will watch it though, because we got to make sure that down the stretch, if we did anything wrong there that I didn't see live, that we got to do better. But, um, you know, when that ball was able to, to, you know, to get kicked out because we had converged a little bit, you know, that's where the look uh, came from mm -hmm. on that scramble. And again, it, you know, those kind of plays sometimes happen. Those scrambles were, energetically trying to get in there there's a loose ball the ball goes down we're kind of you know we're looking to get on that loose ball and then you know she's able to cleanly get it out and then you know obviously you got to give credit hitting that shot um in that spot um tough tough way for us to you know to give up that lead but we'd still had a second left and i thought we did a great job of executing a play to get the look yeah um you know a lot of people have been you know complimentary once the game was over reaching out saying you know what a great play you got mm -hmm. that look what a great play and you know it is it is it's great to see that we executed the play well mm -hmm. and next time when Hanukkah is in that spot you know I look for her to learn from that moment yeah, and, sure. and uh, you know maybe knock that shot down mm -hmm. you know if you look back uh, at a lot of student athletes that have played mm -hmm. for us in the past um, you can remember them missing uh, you know a big shot a big that they shot early and yeah. then you know getting that chance again knocking mm -hmm. it down that makes it feel great oh, uh, I can give an example to just last year Megan Smith hit one against PA at home in a really crazy game and uh, I remember the one time before that she had a shot to win it was at Delaware yeah. and, um, and she missed and she was just torn up about how she had that shot she missed it um, but then came back and hit that one so yeah. learning experiences you know it's it's not about you know putting your head down and being negative about the fact that we that we um, didn't get it that time yeah. but you know yeah, we going forward Get that second opportunity learn from it through, yeah. learn from it if we could do anything differently sometimes you know uh, the ball goes in on a tough shot and you defended everything so well mm -hmm. you just give yourself the best chance and if we have any way to make a, a better defensive stand there at the end or you know do a better job of running that play and kind of could get her feet set and knocking that shot down we're going to work on that so yeah. that's all we can do now uh, you started with uh, Nia Adams Nina Augustin Megan Callahan the Dej Pluvios and Neka Zebo as your starting five mm -hmm. but all 12 players at dress played. Uh, what really went into you know selecting those five as your starting lineup for last night? You know, st for us in our culture and what I'm teaching these guys that you know in our program, it's very important for you to come here and understand right off the bat that starting, coming off the bench, and all that, it's not a big value to us. Right. You know, it really isn't. I mean, I would really expect at this point everybody that's here would 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 not concern themselves with if they're not starting, if they're coming off the bench, meaning that their role is any less important. Right. Um, a lot of times we put a big emphasis on starting in the media and, mm -hmm. and you know just people that follow sports, you know, or you know even maybe some coaches might be doing it as the kids are coming up in the rankings. That starting is such a very important thing, but for a healthy program, for a healthy team, you know, a starting lineup can stay consistent for the whole season or there could be changes and people can be in and out of the starting lineup it, it's really about what's best for the team mm -hmm. it's about you know, just having the mentality in yourself to say I'm here to do whatever the team asks me mm -hmm. that's my message to them all the time you know if you just wake up every day and you say 
I'm going to do whatever the team needs me to do. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do whatever the coach asks me to do, and and not get caught up in, a, uh, in what we want. Right. And uh, uh, we will we will be so much more successful. And um, you know that game going into that game that that lineup was the lineup that we felt going into that game was the best lineup for us to start at that time. Yeah. And and I you know as the season's going on you know that lineup could stay the same or that lineup could change, mm -hmm. and. I would hope that you know, with all that we've taught and we've talked about from the very beginning, that starting or coming off the bench, if your role is 40 minutes a game or four seconds a game, or you don't get into the game on right. that particular time, um, you know, don't get selfish. Right. Uh, stay, stay locked into what we're doing. Keep coming to the gym, working hard. Come to practice and work hard. Put that extra hours in, and you know, one game you might have an opportunity not just to get in there, but to get in there and play a ton of minutes. And, mm -hmm. You know, we're about earning everything we get. Right. And earning it doesn't mean it stops unless you start. You know what I mean? So um, we just got to keep that mindset going. And, you know, I'm constantly looking at uh, lineups and how we're doing the balance of the team and, and who's doing well in certain roles. Right. And, and we're going to keep working at that. Well, I'm going to say, and continue on that, like I said, you played 12 play all the 12 of your players at rest last night. Uh, what, how do you go into you know, finding who's right for what moment. And, you know, with the early season here, you know, again, playing 12 players, how do you, like, at least few, first few games kind of experimenting, see, you know, what rotations fit best or how exactly do you go about that? Well, some of it's on the field when the game's going on. Yeah. You know, you kind of could see someone's really playing with a great pace. Mm -hmm. And that's a real big thing for me is, is what kind of pace they're playing with. Are they, you know, cutting with passion and are they, really playing at a, at a high speed, high level. Um, you know, sometimes when the ball goes in, it, it could be deceiving to all the other things that are going on in the mm -hmm. court. Um, we, you know, a lot of times if someone says to you, you know, uh, how did she play if they didn't watch the game? Oh, she played really well. I, she really worked hard and she played with a great pace. And then mm -hmm. they come back to you and say, you know, you, you told me that one played well. She was like one for six. Um, she didn't shoot well. You know, a lot of times yeah. people are looking at shooting. Well, I'm gonna say you look at we talked about it last night, like Isabella Fawcett. You know, she didn't have the best shooting night, but she had eight assists, which is the most for a uh, Colonial in over since 2011. And actually, I think that matched last game or last year's season high. She has eight, eight assists, three steals. Obviously, got after very well defensively, but you know, you look at the shooting numbers and you're like, well, she was okay. But That's, she yeah. 27 minutes off the bench in her debut. That's a great point. That's a great point. That's a great comparison to what I'm saying mm -hmm. you know you're, you're, you're bringing up a perfect comparison it really is uh, you know on the hind you know if you're if you're just looking at the game you know in hindsight now and you're reflecting on it if you really think about it what you just said is exactly right. the big picture yeah. but if you're looking at uh, a box score mm -hmm. in hindsight and you're just looking at a box score and you're not even thinking about the game um, you would look at the shooting first mm -hmm. you know, that's where everyone's eyes are always drawn through how many points do they score and how do they shoot? Yeah. But there's other columns in there: assists, steals, blocks, rebounds, mm -hmm. turnovers. Yeah. Uh, those are those are big assists as well. I mean, big um, big stats as well. Yeah. And eight assists is um, is a great is a great day in the office for her. Um, yeah. You know, setting up her teammates and, mm -hmm. and you know first college game, first Division One college game out there. And uh, I thought she did a good job. And, and at the end of the game, you know, she was out there in those in those late minutes there and. And she definitely made some things happen and some great some great moments for her right off the bat. So it was great to see and uh, you know continuing to to get better at her trade is uh, is something that she's going to keep doing and um, we're going to keep working on it. Yeah, and uh, one of those starters I mentioned uh, in the starting five there, Nia Adams. Uh, she had 20, she played 26 minutes, uh, five points, two rebounds, and a steal. First action for her since last November over in California at the Cal Poly uh, Thanksgiving tournament. Mm -hmm. uh, what did you like from her, uh, you know, and her return to the court, really? You know, Nia being off as long as she has, you know, it's great to see her out there and being able to play those bulk minutes. Uh, 26 minutes is a lot, and, and Nia's a long athletic defender. She goes to the basket well for us. She's a little different than what your usual guards are. Your guards are a little smaller, but you know, can yeah. live up and, you know, be relentless on the perimeter and she you know she can guard one to four really oh yeah her length. oh yeah yeah she's she's someone that um, you know gives you that defensive stability and that attack to the rim type of mentality and and like you said it was her first game back going and you know live and you know um, you know the competition obviously being a 
at the at the all time highest on the road. Um, you know, we knew Youngstown was going to be um, you know coming after us. It's the first game, and last year we we did really well in that game and, and won a pretty lopsided game. Um, played really well on both ends of the floor of that game, so we knew it was going to be a tough battle. And um, and she did a good job of of, of defending mm -hmm. while she was out there for 20, 26 minutes. Mm -hmm. And um, you know she's someone that can give us that stability. So it's it's really a blessing to have her back out there. And there's been a lot of work, you know, getting her back and a lot sure. what she's sacrificed to get out there. And um, you know she's she's showing a lot of toughness. And I think that's the biggest thing that the the younger players are seeing from someone who's a a leader now um, is that you know you could talk about that but you know seeing her being back out there and pushing hard and and getting back out there and, and helping the team uh, that was great to see yeah absolutely now you know we're back here at the North Athletic Complex you have a pair of games uh, you know on Sunday and Tuesday uh, your second year here at the NAC so like what's it like playing here obviously they're you know adding capacity here with more bleachers and now the men are playing here uh, what's the atmosphere like, uh, you know, playing here at the North Athletic Complex? Well, you know, when we um, when we um, announced the new arena, mm -hmm. you know, there was a ton of joy in what this new arena was going to bring. But you knew that there was going to be some sacrifice. Um, and a lot of times when you build a new arena and you put it right on top of where your old arena was, really have to play yeah, yeah, you got to find a home. Uh -huh. Um, but the way that we are able to time this and build this building uh, to, to be our home temporarily mm -hmm. and then obviously have a great use for it with all the students being able to use this going forward yeah. and completely have it as their place, um, it, really, it really is an amazing um, blessing and, and, and the mindset to do this uh, was really great. Um, when we made the decision to want to play in here last year, yeah. you know, we were talking about where we want to play. I wanted to play here. Yeah. I wanted to play where we practice every game, every day. I wanted to have a great routine. You know how much I, right, I believe exactly. in routines, make your team, make mm -hmm. yourself as a person. So the routine of practicing here, our locker rooms right here, and not having to travel and stuff was something that I valued. Just being on campus. Being on campus, allowing the students to come to the games on campus. Mm -hmm. This was all my thought process, you know, and, and, and a lot of this comes from experience, you know, of being around, you know, college basketball, Division One basketball right. for a long time. You know, I, I've seen, you know, decisions made and great decisions and decisions that people would want to have back about, you know, what the, how they want to handle something and, you know, um, you know, being able to go play in a big arena and all that downtown and all that's great, but yeah. um, you got you got to get down there. You got to arrange that, you know, we're, we're, yeah. yeah, we're dealing in the winter. So, you know, I mean, obviously the travel in the cold and it could be snow and obviously the city traffic. So this is where I wanted to be from the very beginning. And, uh, you know, I know the men are joining in now and they're, they're yeah. making a change in what they're doing. Um, and, um, you know, we get a lot of people in here. It's pretty loud and um, it's well lit. And, um, yeah, I think it's a great, I think it's a great uh, transition place for us. I'm, I'm looking oh, forward sure. to this season in here again. And. And, uh, and then when you come on the campus I and mean, you see the event center, like it's the progress on there is you know, pretty remarkable. It's going to be a incredible facility. Yeah, outside. you know when I take my ride in, um, a lot of times it's still dark outside, and I I can see the lights on in there and those guys working. Um, <laughs> they might I, be the only people that work hard or longer than you do. Yeah, you well, when we get in so early, it's still dark, <laughs> and then if I can at least you know have a reason to get out of here and 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 you know go to another appointment on campus or yeah. you know venture off before it gets dark because it's getting dark early now again mm -hmm. so i i, I want to make sure that i get a chance to take a good look at it this week uh when it's lit out and see how how it's looking on the outside but uh, the tours that i've taken in it um yeah. i've seen you know the development you could see the arena coming together and you could see the practice facility you can see the office space that we have with the windows on the side and yeah. Yeah, it's really exciting, and um, you know we just got to be able to tuck that away and say that's going to be that's there. That's next year. That's, that's next, next year. year. We're here at the NAC. We're here this year, yeah. and uh, we're we're very uh, fortunate though to to have that going up, and we're gonna we're gonna be excited when we get in there. But this year, uh, we're excited about this loud environment that we can provide here mm -hmm. and get these students back over. We got to get more students at our games. Yeah. I really I really feel like an exciting team here, Colonial Nation. I mean, twenty five and eight last season countless NEC uh, championships, you know, 
need to come out and support this team. Yeah, I, I think it's a fun environment. We, we talk all the time about, you know, the, the fan experience and how we can make it better. I think if the students came out, they would uh, realize, you know, if they dive into this, into our program, yeah. uh, I think they would, you know, get to know the players and how we play. And, yeah. and um, you know, when you see them on campus more now, you have that connection of being at their games. Say, so. that's the beauty of a small campus. You can see, you know, student athletes that you root for on the weekends, everything like that, and they're normal people just like you and I. That's right. Uh, I mentioned about the time management earlier. Uh, I wanted to kind of touch on because now we're back into the season, and we meant, we talked about last episode about how the team's GPA and what goes into that. Now you know with games in season. What is it like for the student athletes to, you know, how do they balance or how do you you know manage your time, uh, you know, getting your classwork done while the team's on the road and everything like that. Well, we talked about this, and I think in our first episode, yeah. uh, we talked about um, the schedule mm -hmm. that we create in the non-conference. We're always trying to uh, limit missing any classes. Right. Um, that helps a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think one of the biggest things that you know that we can get caught up in as as coaches is that you know we want to win that game. We want to give ourselves the best chance to win that game. So if that means sacrificing classes or a, you know a chance for someone to be in class leaving earlier all that stuff that goes on uh, when you miss class even though you get notes or the professor may provide you with information mm -hmm. uh, it's not the same of being in that class right. it's not the same you can get those notes from the professor and everything and also be in that class and 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 to pay attention to that lecture so that's the first priority always is that when we travel is as our routine and our time management is is that we're not gonna take that for granted. Mm -hmm. And so that's one of the first things that's important for, our, for the way we are academically. Uh, the, the second thing is, is that we talk about all the time, when you have time to yourself, mm -hmm. what are you doing? Yeah. You know, like, are you doing something fun first or are you doing something that you need to do and get your work done first? Um, you know, when you wake up in the morning, again, starting with the right mindset, mm -hmm. that helps your time management. You know, I always talk to them about making your bed. What a great way to start the day. And, you know, you've probably got in trouble a million times as a kid <laughs> for not doing that. But I, I love to get up in the morning, make the bed, and then start your day with that responsible, you know, organized uh, type of mentality. And, um, you know, then heading off to practice and, and then heading off to class, just taking things moment to moment. Right. That's really important as well. You know, your time management will really get jacked up if you're thinking about something, you know, four hours from now and you're in the middle of doing something right now. You know, you got to be able to lock into what you're doing at that time. Reflection, yeah. you know, reflection. When you get done with the day, you know, looking back at your day and you're saying, boy, I wasn't my best today. Mm -hmm. I, didn't get a lot, I didn't get as much done as I really wanted to. What went wrong? Yeah. And then you got to be honest with yourself and go forward with grace. Mm -hmm. you, you, you know, if you, if you had a two, three hours that you just blew and you, and you didn't study or you didn't do something you're supposed to, you know, don't let that happen the next time. Reflect on it and say, you know, when I get in that moment again, I'm going to do my work, even when I'm feeling a little tired, I don't feel like doing it, because that's going to define me. Mm -hmm. You know, those days that are tough, yeah. that I stay committed to what I need to do. Um, sounds, you know, great to talk about, but when right. you get into these moments, yeah, that's course. really what the best thing about time management is sacrificing. Mm -hmm. And um, you got to have that balance, though, too, Ethan. You can't, you can't say, okay, well, I get up, I start working, you know, I go to practice, I go to class, I study, I do that. And then, you know, you got to have that balance too. Right. Where's that time to yourself? Mm -hmm. And having that appropriate time to yourself. Mm -hmm. um, you got to have balance in life. So it's not that you just work, 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 go to bed, work, 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 work. You got to have time and it's got to be a healthy time mm -hmm. doing healthy things. Yeah. Now, I, uh, before we uh, preview the game, I have a question from a fan here. Uh, Matt okay. asked, says your teams are always consistently at the top of the league defensively and one of the top teams in the nation in that uh, category. What do you do during practice here to uh, help fine-tune that kind of lockdown unit? Well, that's a great question, Matt. You know, it, it has a lot to do with, you know, a daily work ethic and, and valuing the defensive end of the floor. Mm -hmm. you, um, you can, you know, show a lot of video. You can, you know, teach a lot of schemes. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when we play our man-to-man -man defense, you can talk about how we're going to tweak this and do this and that in, into certain games. 
but you got to be willing to go out there and practice and practice and practice daily. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you step onto the court four out of five days and, and play accountable defense, yeah. that one day that you don't is going to set you back. Mm -hmm. If you just start to become lazy in, your, in, your, in what you're doing, um, you're not going to have that kind of defensive success that we've had. So that's what we're really challenging ourselves for in practice when we go over defensive slides, defensive things, not going out there and going through the motions. As a coach, you know, you want to have a great routine. When you mix drills in and things like that, you want to make sure that the drills are not allowing the student athletes to, to, to just not go out there and have to think while they're playing defense. Mm -hmm. it, it's a thinking game on both ends of the floor. Right. And defense is a lot of passion and determination, toughness. It's a work ethic, but also is a lot of communication mm -hmm. and intelligence. Yeah. And, and if you're lacking in that in practice, if you're not challenging yourself in practice, that's not going to carry over. It's not going to carry over. No. That's how you. That's how you build confidence. You build confidence through a great work ethic. Mm -hmm. If you have a great work ethic, and you work hard in practice every day, and you challenge yourself to do better in practice, then when you go into the games, you can be confident because you know you put the work in, and you know your instincts are healthy. Right. When you don't have healthy instincts, when the lights go on, you know it's just not going to change mm -hmm. for you. So, that's really what has been the biggest testament to why our defense has been strong. Is that. You know, we value it, and, and when we come in and we're having those tough days, we make sure we embrace them and continue to play defense on those days. Yeah. Uh, lastly here, um, Sunday, LaSalle at noon. Tuesday, Rhode Island at 7.30. I know you're not going to give me anything about Rhode Island. You probably, yeah. I'm probably telling you the first time that you're playing Rhode Island on Tuesday. Uh, so let's just focus on LaSalle here on Sunday. Yeah. Uh, you're back here at the NAC, like I mentioned. Uh, so, you know, first time for the freshmen here to play a home game. Uh, you know, what, what's going into the prep here uh, to, you know, bounce back from a tough loss at YSU on this, or yesterday, rather, and have a better effort, or not a better effort, but a better performance here mm -hmm. on Sunday? Yeah, you know, um, we made mistakes. You know, we, we, we have some areas that we have to definitely tighten those screws I talk about. We have to tighten screws up in certain areas where you know you're looking at it and it looks like like how are we struggling with that right there that that to me is something that you know we've made simple in the past or you know that she showed us in practice that she can do that and she's not doing it as well right now what is it that maybe is is happening there so what we got to do is we got to go back to practice and, and maybe get some more reps in some certain areas of what we're doing um, use the video as a great tool yeah. to see yourself out there and what it looks like when you're in that moment, what it looks like from over here, so how you can change what you're doing by right. seeing yourself. You know, these are the kind of moments that really define us. Yeah. You know, it, if we would have won the game and we would have got that stop at the end and that ball doesn't go in and, and, and the game's over, um, you know, you could, you know, look past a lot of um, things that you didn't do well. Okay, you could. You, you know, winning right. will mask uh, things that you didn't do well. You know, like there's professional athletes they get on TV and you just wonder where their head is and they talk about how, you know, winning cures everything. Uh, I could be dysfunctional all week long. I can go on and talk on Twitter. I right. could be disrespectful. I could talk about trade me, do this and that. Yeah. And then we win the game and it cures everything. Right. That's, that's completely not true. Right. Um, you know, that, that's, that's dysfunctional. Mm -hmm. And... Um, what we have to understand is, is that when either we win or lose, we have to come back and have that routine to study that video hard and be ready to come to practice. As a coach, you know, balancing practice out now so that we can better, get better in those areas. Right. And, you know, you look at it and you say, well, you played Youngstown State last game. Now you're going to play LaSalle. It's two separate teams. We're still in control of a lot of things that we do. Of course. And we've continued to got, we have to continue to focus on what we need to do to get mm -hmm. better. Um, you know, LaSalle is going to have its own challenges for us. Yeah, and they're coming from a new coach there, too. That's right, new coach uh, and obviously a new energy and, and um, you, know, you know, the system that was in place before last year's videos and stuff isn't going to be the, obviously the same. Oh, yeah, yeah it's, it's, a, it's a different, it's a different uh, coaching staff now and, and a different system. So, um, again, just going back to work and, and focusing and going through our routine and you know, win or lose, you got to have that same mindset, and you got to be mentally tough. You know, uh, gracious winners, you know, they're dime a dozen. You know, gracious yeah. losers, 
um, those are the ones that are special and they respond, they come back and they, they continue to fuel through um, unconditional trust in their teammates and their coaching staff and that's what we're looking for now is to come back and, and have that unconditional trust in what we're doing and, and not lose our faith in who we are uh, on and off the court, stay joyful, continue to be positive, keep that circle tight of positive, positive voices around you and that's what we're looking for. Well, thank you again for joining me, and uh, good luck this weekend. Thanks, Ethan. I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Sunday's game against LaSalle will be played at noon, while Tuesday against Rhode Island is a 7.30 tip. Both games can be seen on NEC Front Row.